Hello everyone, my name is Paula and um, thank you for joining me today for lunchtime with the Irish Peatland Conservation Council. Um, this is supported by the Community Foundation for Ireland and the, Environ the Irish Environmental Network. Um, in our last lunchtime talk, we celebrated World Curlew Day and today we're going to explore some of the plants and animals that you can find on peatland habitats. So for those of you who actually don't know much about the Irish Peatland Conservation Council, uh, we are a charity and our mission is to conserve and protect a representative sample of Irish peatlands for people today and uh, future generations. We are based at the Bogavala Nature Centre in Lullymore, County Kildare. We own and manage five peatland reserves, which are Lodge Bog in Lullymore West in County Kildare, Fenner Bog in Waterford, Gurley Bog in Meath and Cold Bog in Kerry. Um, our work includes a lot of different areas such as site conservation, the monitoring of species, peatland policy, research, education and awareness. The Save the Bogs campaign is guided by peatland uh, conservation action plans. We have developed seven so far since its foundation in 1982 and the latest action plan is called Peatland and Climate Change Action Plan 2030 which should be read in conjunction with the Peatland and Conservation Action Plan 2020, halting the loss of peatland biodiversity. If you'd like to learn more or purchase our latest peatland action plan, you can go on to our website at www.ipcc.ie. So peatland biodiversity. There are over 600 different types of plants and animals that can be found on bogs in Ireland and uh, they are especially adapted to the wet, acidic or alkaline habitats, habitats which are uh, open environments. Today we learn about some of the most common species. Um, okay, so beginning with the plants, uh, this is just a typical overview of some of the plants you might find on a raised bog. Um, the plants are uh, adapted to the acidic environment. You can find at least eight um, common species of sphagnum moss. And on the drier areas, you will find the likes of heather and in wetter areas, you'll find uh, common cotton grass. Blanket bog vegetation is similar to that of a raised bog. Um, so for a mountain blanket bog above 200 metres from sea level would be, uh, you'll find ling heather, cross heath and bog rosemary. And uh, on Atlantic blanket bog, it's more grassy in appearance. The Atlantic blanket bog is between zero and 200 meters above sea level. Uh, you typically find purple moor grass, bog cotton and deer sedge. Uh, and generally you would not find uh, bog rosemary and cranberry. Fen vegetation is typically richer um, due to the influence of groundwater and springs. Uh, the dominant uh, plants you'd find along the surface are black bog rush, sausage, common reed and pur purple moor grass. In the drier wooded areas, you'd get a lot of uh, sedgy vegetation. And in the quaking areas, some bottle sedge, marsh sinkfoil, meadowsweet and bog bean. Now, um, these three posters are available free to download on our website under the resources section. So if you go on to www.ipcc.ie and go to the resources section, you can find these free um, posters to download. Now, today we're just going to look at some of the common species you can find on peatland habitats and uh, their special adaptations to living in this environment. If you'd like to learn more information about some of the plants, um, you can actually find uh, more information here at the link. So our first plant is bog cotton, and you can find two species of these on bogs in Ireland. Um, the first one is the hare's tail cotton grass. Um, it produces a small brownish green flower from, May, from April to May, and the flower has yellow anthers with long thin leaves. Um, from May to June, it produces one single cotton fruiting body. It is found on acidic and raised blanket bogs, uh, acidic rays and black box in the drier areas. Um, the common cotton grass flowers from April to June it produces um, a common or many uh, cotton fruiting bodies from June to July, uh, June to July. So this is a special um, this is a characteristic between both the common cotton grass produces many um, cotton fruiting bodies 
whereas the hare's tail cotton grass produces one uh, cotton fruiting body. And um, the common cotton grass, again, found a similar habitat to the hare's tail cotton grass. It has long, thin leaves, which are typically between two to five centimeters wide, and they are tinged with a reddish color. Uh, you'd find this in, in the wetter areas as well, so in the likes of bog pools. Um, now, in the past, both species were used to stuff pillows, so they would collect the, the cotton fritting bodies and stuff their pillowcases. Now, it does have special adaptations to living on peatland habitats, which are very nutrient poor, typically, um, so especially in raised and blanket bogs. Uh, in the winter time, um, it dives back and it stores uh, the it stores food in bulbs underground. It is known as the um, bog snorkeler because it has deep roots which can reach up to sixty centimeters into the peat, and this allows it to um, you know access nutrients further down in the peat. It has these special tissues uh, with air channels called aerenchyma that allow for the transfer of gases such as carbon and oxygen from the tip of the plant all the way down to the roots. Uh, it has these long thin leaves, which are specially adapted to conserving water, which um, help to, it to reduce the loss of water essentially uh, by reducing evapotranspiration in hot weather. Um, our third uh, plant is sphagnum moss. And sphagnum moss is a peat forming plant all species are protected under the European Union Habitats Directive. You can find up to 24 different species of sphagnum in Ireland, and you'll find them on fence, raised and blanket bogs. Now in the image here, the very tip of the sphagnum moss is the living part and everything beneath that is peat forming. Um, it has these specialized hyaline cells which allow it to store up to 20 times its own weight in water and it grows one millimeter each year. Uh, another adaptation is a special ion exchange mechanism. So uh, essentially it exchanges hydrogen ions for calcium, which creates acidic conditions uh, and it makes conditions more acidic for it. Um, a fun fact, so sphagnum moss was used in World War I for its antibacterial properties to treat wounds. So this is the ion exchange mechanism and um, by creating acidic conditions and an acidic pH, it actually doesn't allow for microorganisms to live. So therefore, um, microorganisms or bacteria will not grow on wounds. And um, also it was used in World War One. Um, it was used to create a bandage to treat these wounds as well. Uh, our next plant is bog bean. And this is a wetland plant found in shallow water areas such as fens, bogs and canals. It has these white pinkish flowers, um, which are star shaped and uh, born on short creeping stems. Each flower has five petals with tiny hairs on the edge. It has three leaves that are hairless, which can be seen above the surface of the water. Um, it can be seen in flower from March until June. So if you have um, a peatland or a water area nearby, you might pop down to have a look and see if it's in flower in your area. It can be found in both alkaline and acidic water. Um, so our next plant then is sundew. Um, and today we're going to learn about the round leaved sundew. So it is an insect eating plant. Um, it has spoon shaped leaves with over 200 tentacles and at the end of these tentacles is a sticky glue like substance which is used to trap insects. Um, now the leaves then roll over once it's caught uh, an insect or a fly and um, it breaks down the fly and absorbs the essential nutrients it needs to grow and that's a special adaptation to living on nutrient poor habitats. Um, so again, it, it is found on peatland habitats, but it only grows on peatland habitats. Uh, it can be found growing on the surface of peat or on the sphagnum hummocks. It has shallow roots, and in the wintertime, it will actually hibernate to avoid freezing. So that's another special adaptation uh, to stop it from freezing in the wintertime. Now, you will find it emerging slowly on the bog at this time of the year. So if you want to pop down and have a look at that, um, it's just coming out. It produces a small white flower from July until August, 
Um, another interesting fun fact about the sundew is that it was used to treat illnesses such as coughs. Now, moving on to our um, uh, animals that you can find on the bog, and uh, we'll begin with the common frog, which is our only species of native frog in Ireland. And it is found on various habitats, um, such as hedgerows uh, and uh, especially bogs. Um, so you can find them on bogs in Ireland. It is an amphibian, which means it can live comfortably on both land and water, but it does need water to complete its life cycle. Um, it uses camouflage to protect itself uh, and hide from predators. So it is a special adaptation. It, it can change its skin color to blend in with the um, color of its surroundings. It is protected under the EU Habitats Directive and the Irish Wildlife Act. Uh, a fun fact, it breathes through its skin, under water, and uh, on land, it actually breathes through its nostrils. But just a brief overview of the life cycle of the frog. Um, so the, the adults emerge after hibernation and they congregate at uh, a water source. Uh, the female lays up to 4,000 black eggs, so the, the eggs are known as frog spawn, and they're then fertilized by the male. Now, after 10 to 21 days, the eggs develop into tadpoles. If you have a higher temperature, um, it means faster development. So just say in the likes of a greenhouse where it'd be a lot warmer. At 10 weeks, the tadpoles then develop hind legs. And by 14 weeks, they have all their limbs and the tail is reduced. Um, the tail then disappears and by the next autumn they are double the size they were and they reach sexual maturity at the age of seven or ten or seven or eight sorry and they can live for between five and ten years. The Irish Peatland Conservation Council are coordinators of the Hop to it Frog Survey so if you do see any frogs um, you can contact us at ipcc.ie with your frog sighting or go, or sorry, at bogs at ipcc.ie for um, frog sighting or go onto our website at ipcc.ie and fill in our online survey. The viviparous lizard is our next um, animal um, and is a, it is our only true native reptile and it is very common. So you can find another reptile called the slow worm However, this was an introduced species, so it wouldn't be a native species in Ireland. Um, the viviparous lizard, it hibernates in the winter and it emerges in spring for the mating season. It is typically 13 centimetres in length uh, and the female will, gives birth to live young, which is a rarity in reptiles. And you would find these typically around September. Um, it can be found in a lot of different habitats, including bogs, grasslands, the coast and uplands. It feeds on invertebrates such as snails and spiders. Uh, it has a thick neck and a thick tail and the tail is generally up to two, two times uh, the length of the body. To escape a predator, it does have this unique adaptation. It can drop its tail um, to distract the predator and uh, escape essentially. And uh, eventually it will grow a new tail. Uh, a fun fact, so it is an ecotherm or ectotherm, uh, my apologies. They are cold-blooded animals and cannot regulate their body temperature, which means that they actually rely on the sun um, to uh, uh, speed up their metabolism. Now, if you do want to see this animal on the bug, this time to go down is in the morning time, so early morning, just as the sun is coming out, you'll see these small little animals basking out in the sun. Uh, whereas if you were to look for this animal later in the evening, it would be a lot quicker because it's actually warmed up then. Our next animal is the curlew. Now we did go through a little bit about the curlew in our last talk, but we'll go through a, a few more things in this talk today. So it is a wading bird, uh, which is roughly 50 to 60 centimeters in length with a wingspan of 80 to 100 centimeters. It has a, a mottled grey brown plumage with long, thin, bluish legs and a long downward curled beak. And this beak is especially adapted to probing uh, insects and freshwater insects, which can be found on bogs and in bog pools um, in Ireland uh, and uh, uh, many other countries. Um, so it can be found um, 
on the coast in Ireland during the winter times. Um, but from March to July, the Irish population actually move inwards and typically feed or breed on bogs and grasslands where there is a supply of food. It is a ground nesting bird. Uh, and between April and June, it lays a, a clutch of three to four eggs um, with the chicks hatching from May to June and fledging by mid-July. Um, so again, it is specially adapted to the bogs in the fact that it breeds on the ground. Uh, it is protected under Irish and EU law um, due to the rapid decline in the breeding population. So it's estimated that there is less than 138 breeding pairs of this bird uh, of the Irish population left in Ireland. Uh, and you can see here, this is an image of the great diving beetle. So just an example of some of the in insects it would be probing in bog pools. Moving on to the Irish hare. So um, hare live on bogs, but rabbits don't. Why not? And this is a really interesting thing. Um, so a hare can live on a bog because it doesn't actually dig a burrow like a rabbit did. Uh, and that's a, a unique thing to, to this habitat as well. It has, if a rabbit was to live on the bog, it would dig a burrow, but the burrow would fill up with water because a, a, a bog is actually a wet habitat. So that's why you find hare, but not rabbits. Um, the fur is um, grey brown in winter and uh, reddish brown in summertime. Um, this helps the animal to hide amongst the peatland vegetation. And the females are typically larger than males. So the females can be between 3 to 3.5 kg and the males between are, are around 3 um, kg. It is herb herbivorous and it feeds on heather and bog cotton. Um, the mating occurs in March, where hair can be seen boxing one another. Uh, a, an interesting fact about the hair is that in the wintertime, if there is no food on the bog, the hair are known to actually eat their droppings because they have a different digestive system than people do. And they don't initially absorb all the nutrients in uh, when they eat uh, the plants first. And so therefore they go back to their droppings and they can eat the droppings again and reabsorb those nutrients. Dragonflies. So um, there are 30 species of dragonflies found in Ireland and you find these typically around freshwater habitats. Um, they begin their life in bog pools as nymphs, which you can see in the top image here. This is a dragonfly nymph. Uh, they can spend or they can live for up to five years of their lives as this uh, nymph in freshwater habitats. The nymph has an exoskeleton, which means it has a skeleton on the outside of its body. And in order to grow, it actually molts. So it might molt up to eight times. Um, after three to five years, the nymph emerges from the fresh water and it will crawl up onto um, the vegetation and it will undergo metamorphosis. So out will come um, the beautiful dragonfly, which would live for between a few months to one year um, on land. Uh, so both the adult and the nymph are ferocious predators. So they will hunt other creatures. And uh, um, the dragonfly is one of the only creatures that can actually catch and eat uh, insects in, in flight. So they're big, big predators on our bogs, especially, and a lot of other habitats. Um, so that is the end of our plants and animals uh, found on peatlands. If you would like to become a friend of the bog and support the Irish Peatland Conservation Council, you can contact us um, at, at bogs.ipcc.ie or you can become a friend of the bog um, on our website at ipcc.ie and we would be very, very grateful. Uh, thank you. And um, if you're, uh, we do have an upcoming talk again next week or so on um, peatland habitat assessment next Tuesday. So do do take part or do participate. And if um, if you do want to see uh, some of these recordings, you can actually find them on our web on our uh, YouTube channel at uh, the Irish Peatland Conservation YouTube channel. So be sure to check them out. Um, thank you very much for taking part in our talk and I hope to see you next time.